what the fuck is this guy talking about? This guy emailed, you have a KitchenAid artisan mixer advertised for 209 Can I get it in red? What the fuck are you talking about? I don't have anything advertised. I have the DV Farm Christmas list on the website, on the DV Farm Facebook page. And one of the products, which has already been purchased, has the KitchenAid stand mixer. Oh, my God. Get the DV mixer today. It's a DV store. Let's go. Oh, my God. <laughs> Please remember the views and opinions expressed by this show or any other show on DV Radio and its guests are strictly those of said individuals and do not reflect those of the DV Radio staff nor the staff of dysfunctional veterans. Three, two, one, zero. Strap yourself in because we're set up, switched on, and ready to go. Attention, everyone. You're tuned in live. DV Radio. Online and on the go on your mobile device. Listener's discretion is advised. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's get ready to rumble! Hey, and you're listening to DV Radio with the old guy. I see Bo, who never leaves his couch for some reason. Google and recall, and I don't know where Mark he's at. I was going to say he probably went to Kroger. <laughs> <laughs> the little garlic <laughs> sauce is delicious. You all right neo-Nazi bastards better stop it right now. If you use the cheap sauce, it don't taste good. <laughs> it tastes like ass. <laughs> and I've got an important message. Joe Junkie and Carrie Crack are perfectly fine for Tombstone. Well, yep. Carrie Crack is perfectly fine. She's in New Zealand. Oh. I would have sex with Rabbit. How can you even read that with a straight face? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I've heard that many like short and tuna can girth, so I'm winning in that round apparently <laughs> you're tuned in to wdvr on dvradio.net or by searching dv radio on your tune in app on your favorite mobile device because this is how it is on dv radio that is how it is right here on barracks talk live dvradio.net wdvr it's the first day night evening whatever you want to call it of december 2018 yep i'm bone bone rude um we got oink we got google and we did have a month hiatus, so that means that DB6 needed a night off. Uh, Requel is out hunting. And Marquis Davis, well, he was on a trip down to Argentina when he was on his way back. Uh, President Trump closed the border, so he's stuck on the other side. Anyway, uh, yes, I was gone for an entire month. <laughs> um, uh, you guys are probably wondering why if you've not kept up with uh, them. <laughs> so we had a month off. <laughs> we had a month hiatus, so... So six needs a night off. <laughs> <laughs> and then the marquee part, getting stuck on the other side of the border. Um, <laughs> I'm on a roll tonight. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, we did have a month hiatus. Uh, I had to go have my gallbladder removed. Uh, let me tell you what. If your chest feels like it's about to explode and your arms are perfectly fine, probably your fucking gallbladder. Go to the fucking hospital and get that bitch taken out. Um I sit here. Good to know. Yeah, Note I sit. <laughs> <laughs> I sit here from about three o'clock in the morning to about I don't know five or six, and we were like, "Yep, let's go to the ER." Um, in fucking pain, could not sit still. Uh, it was horrible. Um, got there, they said that it was. They said the doctors, uh, after they done multiple ultrasounds and uh, so a CAT scan and all, that my gallbladder was literally rotting. Uh, so didn't know that was possible. Um, apparently it is, but, um, yeah, so that's why I've been gone. They, uh, took it out. Uh, as you guys know, I have Crohn's, so it takes my body a little bit longer to recuperate and get back to quote unquote normal status. Um, they also okay. fixed this, right. They also fixed a, a small hernia from my previous, uh, surgery back in March, um, where I had my appendix taken out that tried to kill me as well. Um, so that was nice of uh, my surgeon. He's a pretty good guy. But anyway, uh, I'm back. Uh, Google's back. We've got Oink. He's back. Uh, sadly, DB6, like I said, said he needed to take a break because he's been off for a whole month. Um, and he just, he needed a break. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. When he is kind of sick. <laughs> yeah, he, he's having a bad day. So um, anyway, 
there is some breaking news that uh, went out just before we went uh, live. It's uh, Amy Schumer issues heartfelt apology after falling out of her bed during an Alaska vacation. Um, so apparently That's she what caused all that shaking. Damn yeah, it! <laughs> apparently she's the cause of the earthquakes up there uh, this past week. But um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tonight we've got a lot to do. Um, I don't know how well us three are going to get it through to you guys. Uh, <laughs> you know, we play off of each other, so we don't have a fucking script. I'm literally looking at the itinerary and everything that Six wanted us to talk about. Uh, he's going for. But anyway, uh, we will touch on uh, the farm needing uh, lumber. Um, some uh, things going on at the farm, the Christmas wish list, uh, products at the MyDB store, and of course the winter bags for homeless. Um, tonight we do have a guest. If you guys remember Mike Guardia, the co-author of How Moral Leadership, he's going to be on with us tonight to talk about his brand new children's book, um, World War II, Night Before Christmas. Uh, it's at Amazon if you want to go take a look at it. Basically, Santa makes a surprise visit to the American GIs in Europe. Christmas Eve, 1944, but he's going to be on to talk about that and some other stuff later on in the show after the first break, actually. So, uh, without further ado, Google, uh, would you like to talk about what's been going on at the farm this week or the last fucking month? <laughs> um, so... That's pertinent well, information. Wait. <laughs> That's pertinent information. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Um... They are, we are looking for lumber. Um, I, I keep telling them to make me a specific list. That way, if somebody wants to purchase and have it shipped to us directly, I can just pass it along. But they still have not done this. So, um, we need lumber so we can build stalls to put into the Kwanzaa hut so we can get the horses here. Um, come when the when the ground is not so frozen anymore um so there's that uh keep doing your little facebook um donation thing facebook fundraisers yes that thing (laughs) (laughs) i'm so well prepared for this facebook facebook (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> birthday fundraisers is what they're called, but I think you can do it even if it's not your birthday. So, I believe so because anytime I post something, it asks me, "Do you want to make? Do you want to add oh a nonprofit?" God. I'm like, "This has nothing to do with a fucking nonprofit. Like, this is me saying <laughs> I'm skipping." <laughs> like, well, Jesus well, that's like the other day. I'm on the radio page uh, posting something, and it had nothing. It was like a joke, a fucking comedy joke, like fucking hilarious and everybody's fucking laughing about it and i post it and said would you like to add a donation button and i'm like for what like what <laughs> what does this have to do with sex like no i'm not donating to sex it's not happening like <laughs> exactly exactly now i'm trying to make a post and it won't let me fucking post motherfuckers all right um <laughs> that's besides the point so <laughs> so <laughs> Damn really, you quick, bird. really quick, really um, right? <laughs> Thumper, quick, Thumper is in the chat room asking what the wood is for. The wood is for um, the stalls that are going to be installed in the Quonset hut for the horses uh, after, like Google said, we get the horses uh, after the winter, uh, near the end of the winter, spring, sometime in that uh, area. But we want to have the stalls built as soon as possible. Not that we're rushing, but that's what the wood's for. And who the fuck? Why do I keep hearing screaming? It's like a fucking cave. It's like, That's my it's like, son. It's like a fucking Freddy <laughs> Krueger nightmare over there. Like, ah! ah! It the sounds house like a again, but he's up there screaming like it is. It's okay. <laughs> it, it sounds like a girl. I'm not going to say what it sounds like as happening to said girl, but that's what it sounds like right now. <laughs> oh, the joys of kid children. Right. <laughs> Um, all right, so in other farm news, we got the guys, they made their little Christmas list, and so we posted that on the DB Farm Facebook page. Go there, check it out. It's linked, or, you know, like, there's a what? There's a link for Amazon. Um, that's where the list is located. You can also search for it 
um, if you're in your Amazon account under DV Farm Christmas. I love how Google's like, you can search for it, goddamn retards, if you are on your hey. Amazon. <laughs> no, the retard is the guy asking if he can get the KitchenAid mixer. <laughs> that's not even... <laughs> that's that we've advertised. My DV KitchenAid mixer and live right now at mydvstore.com. <laughs> <laughs> So, so before we went on, I'm going through some emails real quick to kind of catch up and see what's going on. <laughs> Holy crap. I'm like, wow, idiot number two. <laughs> I'm sorry I opened your email because really, there's like no reason. <laughs> oh, where? <laughs> I can't <laughs> right <do>. now. <laughs> sorry. It's <laughs> all right. Oh man, that's so funny. We do want to say thank you to those that have already purchased something for for the guys. We want to make them a nice Christmas. So hopefully, we can accomplish our mission. I'm sorry. I'm reading the wish list, and we've got surge protectors on there, and I just go to it. And for every surge protector, there's a little bubble, and it states what we need it for. It says, some of our stuff is getting fried because we don't have enough surge protectors for the vet house and the farm office. Some of our stuff is getting fried because we don't have enough surge protectors for the vet house and the farm office. Some of our stuff is getting... And I'm like, what? I had to do that, because what if someone is scrolling through and this, what one of them said... You know, like, this, this is why we need this stuff. It's sad when you've got... To write a comment, so... It's sad when you've got to get on the bottom totem pole of retardation. Like, <laughs> it's even sad that I have to say there's a totem pole levels for retardation. Oh, that's so funny. You guys are hilarious. Well, at first I thought it was my browser not loading right, and I'm like, okay, it's going to load in a minute. I Look... The Amazon logo is at the top of my tab, so it's not loaded anymore. And I'm like, oh, my God, we have to do this yeah. for the idiots. This is retarded. <laughs> like, That's so funny. Oh, my God. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> something my wife was asking there, Google, is that uh, as soon as somebody buys something, does that list automatically update so we know that, uh, that we're not getting duplicate? Yes. Okay. So there are, some of them have a quantity listed. So, um, so like for the surge protectors, um, I put in quantity as two. So if someone buys one, then someone else can still buy the other one. I'm not going to say that it's real time. So, so it would show on your end as quantity two has one. And I don't want to promise anybody that it's real time. So, like, if you buy one and someone buys one at the exact same time, I don't know how that's possible, but apparently it is. But if two of you buy something at the same time, I'm not going to say that it's going to update right away. But just be weary that you could be purchasing the same thing twice. <laughs> not, not that it isn't needed, but I'm letting you know. If someone yeah. gets two of something, it's not anyone's fault but the Internet. That's how it works. Right. And we can, you know, like, we'll adjust fire also. Any of the clothing items, I'm going to tell the guys, make sure you try it on. After you have showered and you are clean, that way, if something doesn't fit, we can still send it back and exchange it for a larger size. So, also, gift receipts are phenomenal, which I've forgotten to keep putting on. I keep forgetting to put that onto um, the posts. Well, on, honestly, the good thing about Amazon is if you receive something from a wish list, a lot of times if you prove that it came from that wish list, all you have to do is give them the UPC number or, or model number or whatever. They usually replace it. Um, I've never had a problem out of Amazon with anything like that. I actually got something not too long ago that was broken, and they had no problem exchanging it. They sent me the stuff to, to you know, ship it back and everything. They paid for everything and sent me one back in less than a week. So Amazon's pretty good about that. So if you don't have a receipt, you should be good. Gotcha. But that's right. not to say that it doesn't help. <laughs> right. No, I, I understand. Um, so... 
I think that that's kind of it for uh, for updates on that end. Um, the duck that has been quarantined for I don't even know how long now is back with her flock, and she's super excited. So that's a major plus. Okay, I'm not letting that go for 21 seconds. It's not oh, going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Too I don't funny. know why I have a 21 second applause. I don't get that, but okay. Well, maybe because you knew that at some point you would need the 20 second applause. One of these days we probably will, no one our luck. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll get rid of it, put in like a three second applause, and then we'll need the 21 second applause. <laughs> Right. Um, is there anything else pertinent to the DV Hive that we must talk about? <laughs> uh, DV itinerary. Uh, winter bags for the homeless. That's not f- through DV Farm, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. they are going to start putting the bags together this coming week and then start passing them out, I believe, the week after or two weeks after. I'm not exactly sure. Stay tuned to the DV Facebook page for that information. Okay. And there are, on mydvstore.com, there are DV stockings for sale. Jingling, jingling, jingling. I'm sure there's other stuff, like... Do they come with that free uh, little nice, you know, green uh, hanging ornament that they hang on, or is that that separate? (laughs) (laughs) Well, if you open your mouth really wide when you order it, I'm sure that there's a big chance you might get one. <laughs> it might come. Um, but I can't see the the problem with me doing farm updates is that yes, I am here, but <laughs> I'm not in charge of this stuff. Like hmm. I'm not, you know, like I don't interact with the guys on a daily basis. Um, like. I'm not involved in any projects that they're doing. I, I, it's, I, I, it's, I can't wait until Monday or Tuesday when Six is like, I was sitting up in bed listening to you guys do the show Saturday, and Google, <laughs> she didn't talk about this, that, and the other, and like I've told her about it, and she was here for it, and she should know. No, <laughs> no but that's the thing. We, we didn't even talk about anything. Like, <laughs> I got home, he made dinner, and then... We ate dinner, and then he took a shit, and then he got on with you guys, and he said, two minutes before the show starts, he comes upstairs, and he's like, oh, by the way, Bo said I can go to sleep. I'm like... I was, I was just... Oh. I, I I didn't want to argue. I was just like, yeah, yeah, do whatever. Like, I, I, I know you're in pain. Just go. I was like, oh... Okay. Like, I, I was in I was in one of those shoe fly shoe moments, like <laughs> Well but then in my head I'm like I I'm gonna have to do the farm update, but I don't know what to update them on. I mean I know like the Christmas list, that's going up that's up and we need we need lumber for <laughs> Awesome. Well, um, one thing that I, I want to touch on really quick, we had someone ask what uh, homeless people need uh, the most, and I wanted to cover the whole spectrum, if you don't mind, Google. I I know Go you and, and, and Six know more about it than I do, obviously, but I know stuff like socks, toiletries, um, gift cards, if they're uh, in a shelter or have access to a shelter, um, probably coats and blankets at this time of year, obviously. Uh, what else am I forgetting? Uh, underwear. Underwear. Um, I I can't think. Gloves. Um, the stuff necessities that you would want right now, basically, uh, uh, uh sure. that you can carry on your person, uh, carry in a uh, backpack or, or some type of carry bag or something like that. Um, yeah. It it like I said, it's depending on what like six said earlier. What's their state of homeless? Um, are they in a shelter? Do they have access to a shelter? Do they live under a bridge? Are they with a shopping, shopping cart? Like what, you know, that also determines what you're going to get them and, and stuff like that. So um, wherever you go, uh, whether it's local or, or to a, a organization or a home or shelter or whatever in your in your neighborhood, just ask what they need first off. 
because there are pe- uh, places that have things that they need more of than, say, food. Um, I know that there's a place here in North Carolina. <clears throat> they get a lot of money donations, but they don't have the personnel to go out and actually shop. So they ask for volunteers to go help them shop. So that could be something that you have to do for them or not have to do, but that you could do for them. But it's all dependent on your locale. It's it, That's basically uh, the best way to go about it is to ask. Um, we could sit here and tell you all day what we know some would need. But again, everybody's situation is different. So ask, get to know the area, and that will give you a really good outlook and, and better idea of what to get them for the homeless people. Um, yeah. Anything anybody want to add to that? I don't think so. Okay. Um, did we make the thousand bag goal uh, for the winter bags, Google? I don't know. I'm not in okay. charge of that. Well, I'm just asking. <laughs> I, I don't know either. I, I, I've been going a month. Then I get dropped to bombshell. We're going to talk about this, that, and the other. And then two minutes before we go live, I'm not doing the show tonight. We've been <laughs> going for a month. I mean, yeah, like... <laughs> You you guys think we're making this shit up? I wish I'd recorded that conversation. I really do. Like the one night I don't record the first half out uh, the last half hour of free show was tonight and I'm like, "Fuck. That would have been great fucking B-roll." But yeah. Um if that's what he said in the last live Facebook video there uh tree, I uh, I'm guessing we hit the 1000 go back. Back go. Back go go back. Winter back go. Yeah, that thing. Bagels. Um, I'm I'm verifying this information with our with our guy. It's hard to say 1,000 bagel without saying it like bagel. I just tried that. <laughs> I, I, that is a tongue twister. Let me tell you. Oh, no. um, <laughs> Sorry. I finally figured <laughs> If you guys didn't know... <laughs> GB Radio is working on a coffee blend with Eubora Coffee Roastery. <laughs> um, you have a chance. Oh, my God. I can't even think straight right now. You have a chance to win two free bags of the DB Radio coffee. And it could be named by you on top of that. All you have to do is go to the link that I just put in chat. And that's in the uh, podcast uh, description, or you can go over to the DV Radio Facebook page, and it's pinned to the top of the Facebook page. Unless you're on a mobile device, I don't think it pins anything. But uh, just look for the post that has the big bag of coffee that has the DV Radio logo and the Ubora coffee cup, and put what you think our coffee blend should be called. No, I'm not telling you what the blend is, because that would ruin the surprise. It shouldn't matter what the blend is. Okay. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Um, yes, we made the thousand bag goal. Okay, we made the thousand bagel goal. The uh, bag goal. <laughs> <clears throat> um, also, uh, um, just to let you all know, you have to uh, put the name of the coffee blend on the original post. If it's not on the original post, we will not look at it. I have too much shit going on to go through 68 posts and look and see everybody's entry. So it has to be on the original post, on the pinned post, on DB Radio's Facebook page. Uh, somebody told me it was horseshit. Well, God, you're horseshit. Come do our job for a day. Um, <laughs> also, uh, those entries have to be in uh, no later than December 11th at 12 midnight Pacific time. Specific time. Pacific time. California time. Uh, then the next day we'll have a poll up of the top three. Then that'll run uh, a week or no, December 4th. My bad. December 4th. It had to be in by December 4th. And then we'll have them up the next day. It'll run a week through December 11th. Let you all vote on it. And the top one, that's what the name of our blend will be. And you will get two free bags of coffee before anybody else, uh, obviously. So if you guys want bags of coffee for free, and DB Radio, go do that right now. Do it. Stop sitting there listening to me. Go there and do it now. Now, do wait. All the all the choices are going to be listed, or just the top the best three. ones? The top three. 
I'm just verifying for them. Yeah, uh, the top three will put a poll up on the Facebook page, uh, DB Radio's Facebook page, and then the public, you guys, uh, will vote on which one you like best uh, to be named. Um, we've had a shit ton, so be sure you go through them, make sure it's not up there already, because if it is, I'm probably not going to put it on there, just so you know. Um, so, so how does the top three get decided? We will decide the top three. There you go. It's just now like that you have all of the information necessary. Go ju- name the coffee. It's like America's Got Talent, you know, where the judges push you on to the next round, and then at the last round, the public decides who wins the finals. That's basically what we're doing. Well, I don't watch that show, so. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch it anymore. I watched it back in the Disney. Oh, man. Back before my Iraqi days. <laughs> uh, I want you guys to stay tuned so you can uh, hear our guest, Mike Gordia, co-author of How Moral Leadership, talk about his latest book in time for the holidays, World War II, Night Before Christmas. It is about Santa making a surprise visit to the American she has in Europe on Christmas Eve in 1944. Um, I'll put that link in the description as well as I'll have it in the chat room when we bring, uh, Mr. Mike Gradia on, uh, the air. Um, don't forget, you can still go to smile.amazon.com, make DB Farm your charity of choice, and a portion of your shopping cart goes directly to the DB Farm. No hidden fees or extra costs, and you're helping out the DB Farm. Again, that's smile.amazon.com, make DB Farm your charity of choice, and do it while you do your Christmas shopping and all of that good stuff this year. Also, if you want to make a actual donation directly to the DB Farm, go to dbfarm.org, enter by the uh, big orange button, then click the Donate tab, and it's that simple. Follow the steps, and you can't get any simpler than that, you guys. You, you just can't. You just can't. Um, hey, I have a quick question. I have a quick so answer. I'm, I'm going through the emails real quick, right? And we got an email from a place, and it says, and it, you know, it's one of those like auto emails, whatever. Mm-hmm. It says, please email unsubscribe if you prefer to not be contacted by me, or click the following link. So I clicked the unsubscribe link, and I typed in the <laughs> the email address, and it says this email address is not subscribed <laughs> to this newsletter. I get those so much, and I'm just like, oh, I'm my like, God. I'm like, you just told me. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like the other day. <laughs> it's like the other day um, I was starting to get the get some stuff together for um, one of our shows. And I log into the account, and it said, there is no account associated with this email address. And I'm like, I have a goddamn. I made the fucking account. I believe I know what fucking email is associated with it. So I spent about two hours trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. Apparently, they took my alternate email address that I had in the account and made that the primary fucking email address. So I had to bitch to the fucking customer service about their fucking system. That was fun. It's like, God damn. Like, it literally took me about two hours to figure out what the hell was going on. I couldn't get a forgot password or nothing. Like, I, I followed every step you're supposed to follow to get into the account. I could not. I was like, what the fuck's going on? Apparently, their system overrid what the fuck I'd done. And was like, oh, fuck you. You're alternate. You're primary, bitch. It's like, what? <laughs> <sighs> yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Um, so, just so everybody knows... We never do an actual Christmas show on the day of Christmas or the day before, um, but we will have a Christmas show on December 22nd, unless I go down again. Um, do not make any sex jokes. That was not a sexual innuendo or anything like that. Um, shut up, both of you. Um, but we'll try to have... <laughs> the, 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 what? <laughs> I said I bleed the fifth. <laughs> oh, it, it literally sounded like you went, I bet with it. <laughs> I was like, when did Porky Pig join the show? Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's all, folks. Um, and then on December 31st, I'm sure that we'll all do our normal uh, New Year's Eve into New Year's Day show um, if everybody's up for it, hopefully. Um, 
if I'm not fucking dying again. So, <laughs> um, well, it's 9.30, uh, 21.30 Eastern Standard Time while we're live. It's not probably while you're listening to us on podcast. So we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to have Mike Guardia, the author of World War II Night Before Christmas, just in time for the holidays. And we'll be back to Barrett's talk right here on dbradio.net. DB Radio. The number of homeless veterans is on the rise, and in 2017, the number ticked up for the first time in seven years to 40,000. Many of these homeless vets live in areas affected by extreme winters, with sub-freezing temperatures and feet of snow. DV is launching our biggest project to date. This winter, we hope to hand out 1,000 winter survival bags to homeless vets across the country. We need your help to make this happen. You can pledge as little as a quarter of a bag or up to as many bags as you'd like at mydvstore.com. DV6, a former homeless veteran and founder of Dysfunctional Veterans and DV Farm, will travel with a team to several cities across the country to give bags to homeless veterans. But we need your support to pull together and make this happen by simply going to mydvstore.com. Once again, if you'd like to donate, please visit www.mydvstore.com. This is Mario Andretti. You know me as a race car driver, but I'm also a Meals on Wheels volunteer. I've raced against the sport's biggest personalities, but I've never met more vibrant, amazing people than the seniors served by Meals on Wheels. You can make a difference by dropping off a hot meal and saying a quick hello. So, America, let's do lunch. Volunteer your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. People been saying to your friend, get a different face. And posting on their feed, they're super ugly. The things they say to them online are cruel and they're not true. So tell your friend, I'll stand up for you. Don't worry, I know what to do. Know someone being bullied online? You can be a witness and make a difference by letting the world know it isn't cool. And by letting your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. You are listening to WDVR only on DDDDDVRadio.net. And we're back to Barrett's talk right here on WDVRDVRadio.net. Please excuse the fact that I had the Winter Bags commercial in there that's recycled from last week, and I was not thinking when I made the playlist for tonight. So, anyway, just ignore that. I'll have it differently in the po- uh, podcast. And you guys that are listening to the podcast heard something differently, so you have no fucking clue what I'm talking about. But I'm just letting the live listeners know, okay? Um, we've got to wait a few minutes for uh, Mike to get back. Uh, he's putting his kids to bed. But, uh, yeah, if you guys don't remember, Mike Guardia came on, uh, I think it was back, was it in the summer? Or was it before the summer? Does anybody remember? I think it was right around that time, I think. I just... I've slept since then, and <laughs> right? not very well in the last I've couple had, days, but I've, I've, I've slept had a, since then. <laughs> I've, I've had a couple of hours since then. Um, but yeah, he came on, he talked uh, about uh, Hal Moore on leadership, which he co-authored with Hal Moore himself. If you don't know who Hal Moore is, uh, you've probably seen We Were Soldiers. Hal Moore is the uh, person that actor Mel Gibson portrayed throughout that movie. Um, go look him up. Wonderful man, wonderful guy, all around uh Nobody can say enough about him. Um, but anyway, we will have him on in just a few minutes um, to talk about his brand new children's book that's just in time for the holidays, World War II, Night Before Christmas. Uh, it's at Amazon. Go over there, and you can use smile.amazon.com, if you form your charity of choice, at the same time. Uh, the link is in the chat room on dbradio.net slash chat if you're listening to us. Uh, right now, and you're not in the chat room, I don't know what the fuck's wrong with you, unless you're on the TuneIn app. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, but uh, we have a lot uh, going on, and uh, everybody, I've, I've seen so many people ask, where's the podcast, why hasn't there been any podcasts? I was out for an entire month, okay? Um, we don't have anybody uh, that does that for us, it's all me, I do 
every bit of the editing, anything you hear on the podcast, it was me. It wasn't some dude in his mom's basement or some fucking team of people <laughs> that we have working for us. We don't have anybody. It's all volunteer, and it's me. Um, the reason for that is because, like I said, it's volunteer. Um, the reason we don't have as many shows as we once did is because a lot of people have lives and they have to make a living. Thus, they can't do a show every single day or every single week and they have to drop out for personal reasons to make a living. Very understandable. I get it. Um, a lot of people say, well, why don't you let somebody else do it? You guys don't understand. We have tried to get people to do it. And a lot of people come in gung-ho. They want to do a show. They want to help edit. And I'll tell you right now, the first time they see what it takes to do a show or to edit a show, they're like, oh, man, my wife's pregnant. I got to leave. I've, I've gotten shit like that. I'm not joking. I I can't tell you how many people have disappointed me. Um, I'm not going to lie. Um, so, yeah, it's hard to find good volunteers. We don't get paid to do this. None of us do. Most of us that do Anything with the radio, we pay out of pocket or the donations that you guys send to us. That's it. Um, we don't have a fancy studio. I literally do it on a 17-inch laptop that was customized and still is a piece of shit. Not even going to lie. So you guys ask what kind of equipment we use? Go to any fucking website and you can find everything that we use. Not even going to lie. Um... You could probably go into fucking Walmart or your local tech store and get everything. Uh, we don't have shit tons of money or anything like that to uh, to give you guys everything you guys ask for, but we do try. And with that, we do have Mike Guardia on. Are you there, brother? Indeed I am, Bo. How goes? It, it, it goes, man. It goes. Uh, how are you doing this evening? Oh, I am fabulous as always, brother, and I am... Elated to be back on the show. Thank you so much for having me. And brother, it's always an open-ended invite to you. You know that. Uh, we we had you on, and when you emailed me that first time and said you co-authored Al Moore, I thought it was a fucking joke. Not even going to lie. I was like, this dude's scamming me. And I was like, oh, no, this guy's fucking real. He's actually not pulling my dick. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> but if you don't mind, really quick, 30 seconds, uh, could you... Uh, let everybody know who you are and why the fuck you're on Barracks Talk. <laughs> Absolutely. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone in Radio Land. This is Captain Mike Wardia, uh, formerly active duty, six years, uh, been a reservist for the past four years now. And aside from my gig as a citizen soldier, I am an author and a military historian, 13 books now so far, and love and life, not only as an author, but as a daddy of two beautiful little girls, ages five and six. And uh, just love what I do and looking forward to uh, keep telling great stories about our brothers and sisters in arms. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, I, I try to read as much as I can, but with everything I've got going on, it's just impossible sometimes. And I know I had a month off, but I just I didn't want to do shit like, you know how you have one of those months where you don't want to do anything i didn't even i didn't want to read facebook post that's how bad it was um but um what i've got to read of the how more on leadership you done a fina a fantastic job brother um it, it's wonderful it's beautiful um speaking of that of how more you've got something that just recently came out if i'm not mistaken about how more indeed bo it is called how more uh life and pictures and it is a coffee table book. It is an illustrated photographic biography of Hal Moore, illustrated throughout with 300 color and black and white photographs, many of them never before published. And uh, you can pick up that bad boy at Amazon or Barnes & Noble. There is also a Kindle edition of the photo biography that you can also enjoy. And uh, this has... Um, this has pretty much every photo that the family was able to give to me and uh, everything that didn't make it into the uh, prior to Hal Moore books. So it tells his entire life story uh, in the uh, chronological sequence and got a few hidden gems in there. You know, Mike, I'm going to I'm going to be very surprised mm -hmm. if the Smithsonian doesn't put something of yours of Hal Moore in there. I, I will be really upset I'll, I'll i will petition if they don't put something in the smithsonian of one of your books or something i mean seriously 
Um, but that's not why you're here tonight, is it? You're actually here for something else. Uh, it's just in time for Christmas. No, absolutely. Absolutely, brother. I'm here uh, actually to talk first and foremost about my second children's book. Because, yes, to all my brothers and sisters listening, uh, aside from writing aside from writing books for grown-ups, I, uh, I'm also a children's book author. Wrote uh, a World War II version of The Night Before Christmas. Oh, nice. Now... I've not got to read it yet, but I've seen that it actually is an illustrated book as well. Is it what what um, uh, level reading for kids is this? Well, uh, it is written in the uh, same style of rhyme and in the same style of meter as the original poem, "The Night Before Christmas." Uh, so, generally speaking, it could be about uh, uh, first and second grade reading level on your own. But of course. Uh, you know, kids who can't yet read, they can have their parents read it to them. Uh, uh, taking a uh, taking a very familiar concept of the night before Christmas and uh, putting it against the backdrop of a good old fashioned story of good versus evil and uh, representing really that Santa Claus is a force for good in the world. I think it'd be a uh, I think it'd be a good way to introduce children to, uh, you know, the broader aspects of history while uh, putting it against something that they know and that they love and that everyone sees uh, as universal good, that universal good being Santa Claus. So you're basically taking um, the concept of familiar familiar rarity and mixing it with a history lesson uh, for children, essentially. Right on, brother. Nice. Um, I know that a lot of people are probably wondering where they can get it. Um, they can get it at Amazon, obviously, but you wanted to do something special tonight live on the air. Indeed. Indeed, I did. So if uh, if any of our listeners out there were to go to Amazon and type in World War II Tonight Before Christmas, they can see it there. Uh, you can also go to my website, MikeGuardia.com, uh, but to... Uh, Everyone out there in Radio Land tonight, I am going to offer a free giveaway. Uh, that is, I am reserving one copy of the book uh, to any listeners out there who go to my website. And on the home page of my website, there is a link where you can contact me. If you click on that link, it'll uh, put up an email form. If you uh, are the first person out there to email me through my website, that's, again, MikeGuardia.com, then uh, there will be a free and personally inscribed copy on its way to you. Now, All is you have there... to do is uh, email me and make sure you uh, put in the keyword Christmas. I was getting ready to say, is there anything special they need to do? Um, so you guys heard it here. If you want a free book during the show, go do that right now. Keyword Christmas in your email. Um, we will announce the winner at the end of the show. Mike, will you be back with us to do that? Or how you want to do that, brother? You know Indeed, I will. I will be. Uh, I will be back on. Uh, back on towards the end of the show. Nice. Now, I know that you've got a lot going on. I know that you said you wanted to take a little break. You know, for the holiday season. Obviously, um, is there anything that you've got coming up uh, at the end of the year or right now or anything like that that you want to talk about for the listeners so they can get uh, ready for it or if they want to go see uh, more information about it? Indeed, brother. Well, uh, I'm going to be uh, taking a little hiatus, as you said, um, from now until New Year's. But uh, then after the first of the year, uh, there are going to be uh, three projects on the horizon uh, for all of our airmen comrades out there. Uh, might be happy to know that uh, one of the projects that I have for 2019 is a book called Wings of Fire. And that is a full combat history of the F-15. And this is uh, this is the F-15 in every country in which it has seen combat, be it the U.S. Air Force, the Israeli Air Force, and uh, any one of our comrades in arms abroad, but a full-on combat history of all of the air engagements that it's been in, up to and including uh, its current role as a uh, as a ground attack aircraft in the ongoing war on terror. Oh, very nice. Now, that is something that I have got to grab as well. I'm telling you, man, you, you write awesomely well. Um I don't say that a lot. I love, there's a lot of authors out there that I, that I love and I love their style. But the way you describe and you, you, you portray things is, it's great. Um, I, I can't exclaim it, uh, enough. Um, 
Is there Thanks, anything? Bro. Hey, hey, man, I'm just telling you how I see it. Google, is there anything you'd like to say to Mike? Um. After you finish beating the shit out of your keyboard. That's what it sounded like. <laughs> Did she mute? Oh my god, I'm so confused. <laughs> I thought I was already muted. <laughs> that is. <laughs> that's how it is. Right here on TV Radio. Done it. Anyway. <laughs> oh my god, I swear. That's so good. Um, I don't. I think you covered everything. Just the link that you provided is not for Smile. Amazon. I know it's not. I told them they can use Smile.Amazon if they'd like to. But then, I know, but then you have to search for it again. No, you anyway. don't. It, it should ask you, if you're logged in, if you'd like to go to Smile.Amazon.com and buy it. Mine doesn't. Well, that's because you probably said, do not show again. I've never even seen it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> TV Oink! You've got kids that uh, are around the uh, age that would be reading this or that you'd like to read to them. Is there anything you'd like to say about the book or to Mike himself? Well, I just got a question for Mike. You know, it's not going to be one of those uh, major pain moments of the little engine that could, the choo-choo thing where they're going to get scared, is it? I mean. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, and that is actually a valid question, brother. Uh, so what I've done is um, when... I was sitting down and I was thinking about the rhyming pattern for this book. I wanted to uh, make a story uh, that wasn't at all macabre or uh, anything that really could scare kids. Um, what you have going on in this story is it is Christmas Eve, 1944, and you have our troops who are freezing on the front lines in Europe. And uh, on Christmas Eve, 1944, you know, of course, uh, our boys on the front lines didn't have a lot of access to good, solid winter clothes or adequate rations. So along comes jolly old St. Nicholas in his sled with his eight tiny reindeers. And uh, green fatigues have replaced his bright suit of red. And he comes to, he comes to deliver them uh, everything that they have to make their winter stay just a little more enjoyable. He brings them coffee. He brings them sleeping bags. He brings them warm winter clothes. And, uh, you know, he says that he is here to reward those who fight the good fight. And brother, if I may, uh, I can, uh, I can give a, uh, I can give a little, um, to give you guys a little preview by reading the first few stanzas of the book, if you don't mind. Of course. All right. So let me go ahead and flip open my copy here. I will give it to you as such. And the first few stanzas of the book for all of our listeners start off as such. "'Twas the night before Christmas, when along the front lines, the whole U.S. Army was in a race against time. The G.I.s dug foxholes in the forest with care, in hopes that the Nazis soon would be there. Together we huddled with feelings of dread, while visions of D-Day were played in my head. On this night before Christmas, 1944, not a trooper was happy to be fighting this war. But the world was in trouble, and we answered the call to get rid of the Nazis once and for all. Now, skipping forward a little bit, it says, There were sleeping bags, coffee, and rations brand new. Merry Christmas, he said, to the red, white, and blue. The Nazis are naughty, but you GIs are nice. And when you're on my list, I don't need to check twice. Very nice. And the rest, awesome. and the rest I will leave to anyone in your audience who would like a copy of the book. I, I like that. I like the way it flows. I, I like the way that you you actually say Nazis. You, you're not trying to keep it PC. You're you're letting the kids know, hey, look, they were called fucking Nazis. Um, <laughs> um, right. that, yeah, I, and, and I, I can't stand that. Um, not just in entertainment, but books and the way people speak. We're, we've turned into such a PC society that we want to shelter and protect everything from our children. It's ridiculous. Um, you can't hide history. I don't care what you do. But I love the way that you bring it up. And, and like I said, the rhyming, it, it sounds even more fantastical, if that's even a fucking word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Does but, it only come in peace? What was that? 
does it only come in paperback? Uh, no, it is available in paperback as well as on Kindle. Uh, now, being that it is a um, being that it is a picture book, it'll only work on Kindles um, that have a color screen. So, um, uh, if you have a Kindle Fire or if you have an iPad, it'll also work there. Oh, very nice, nice. I, I look forward to getting that uh, that. That uh, that uh, that, uh, the, 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 that's all, folks. Um, I look forward, <laughs> <laughs> fucking porky pigs, Matt. Um, <laughs> I look forward to getting uh that copy of the book, and I cannot wait to read it. Um, and if you want, uh, I'll I'll let you you know decide if you want to come back for our Christmas show on December twenty second, and maybe read the book. I don't know how you feel about that for our, our Christmas Absolutely. special. Like I said, um, we'll we'll more than welcome you here and let you do that that night and i'm sure that would be a treat for all that's going to be listening that night but um if is there anything else that you'd like to get out before we let you go uh brother well i just want to give a big shout out to all of the listeners out there uh, i know that uh, if you're listening to this program right now you are probably a veteran just like us and uh to all my erstwhile comrades in arms and even those still serving Hey, everyone keep fighting the good fight. Everyone have a wonderful holiday season. And uh, you just remember, any veteran that's out there, you got a friend in the sky, Mike Guardia. Thank you, brother. And please, everybody, go check out everything that he has. He has wonderful fucking books. I can't praise him enough. Um, go to Amazon, look up Mike Guardia. That's G U A R D. I A or go to MikeGordia.com. Please go over there and do that. And do what he said to get your free copy tonight. Uh, I want you guys to have that chance. Go email him, keyword Christmas. Um, Mike, if that's all, we will see. Uh, well, we'll hear from you. We won't see you uh, near the end of the show. Hopefully somebody's emailed you by the end. If not, I'll fucking email you. I'll, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll tickle your balls a little bit. Um <laughs> Speaking but uh, level, bro, I actually just got my first email. Oh, nice, nice. Right. So, so, Bo, if I may, I will go ahead and announce the winner here on live radio. Oh, go right ahead, brother. All righty. Well, a big uh, now. I'm probably going to butcher this name, so I will apologize in advance. <laughs> um, but uh, big hearty congratulations go to a Brianne Mosley. I hope I got that right. But. Uh, Miss Mosley, and uh, I'm assuming genders here. I know that's a big no-no, but I assume <laughs> from the way the name appears that it is a female. If not, I apologize. Um, but congratulations. Uh, so I will go ahead and uh, follow up with this email. And uh, to Mr. or Ms. Mosley, whichever the case may be, a sign copy will be on its way. Looks awesome. like it's a mister according to chat. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and they said it's pronounced Ryan, just so you know. <laughs> Brother, I am so sorry. <laughs> anyway, okay. I'm sure it's well, a Well, this joke. is what I was going to assume. <laughs> right? <laughs> you make an ass of you and me. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to go there, but... <laughs> Well, hey, Mike, as, as a former Air Force guy myself that did the over nine years with the 15s, if more than that, actually, when are we looking at a release date for that uh, the next book that you're looking at? Uh, we are looking at, give or take, uh, October 2019. Awesome. Well, I tell you what, like I said, as, as a former Air Force guy that did uh, a lot of time with the 15, uh, not only the C model, but the E model as well, uh, I tell you what, I, I definitely can't wait. Oh, absolutely. And I will, uh, I will have a copy, uh, I'll have a signed copy up and ready for you, Oink. Hey, appreciate it, brother. I was going to say, Bo, you have that date written down so uh, you can remind the rest of the world. October 2019. <laughs> yeah, well, that's <laughs> like a year away. I'm going to forget. <laughs> that's why I have Mike. He'll email me and he'll be like, dude, I need to get back on your fucking show. I'm coming whether you like it or not. Um <laughs> Oh my God, we always have a great time with you, brother. And like I said, it's always an open-ended invite for you to come on the show for whatever reason. If you just want to kick back and shoot the shit with us one night, you're more than welcome. Or if you have something, uh, a, a showing or book signing or anything or an upcoming book that you want to get out, please email me, let me know, and we'll get you back on the show. All right, brother? 
All right. That sounds like a plan, Bo. And thank you so much for having me. Hey, man. Thank you for wanting to come on and choosing us as your platform, brother. We can't thank you enough. Absolutely. And you guys will see me in, uh, I guess, about an hour and a half-ish. Oh, are you going to come back? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I guess since I already announced the winner, then I don't need to. Huh? <laughs> I was gonna You're say. more than welcome to. Trust me, we'll be struggling by then. <laughs> right? <laughs> what are you talking about? I have a coming up. Oh. oh. I just put my two little ones to bed, so I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to have to turn in soon myself here. <laughs> All right, brother. You have a great evening. You have a wonderful weekend. And like I said, everybody, please go check out World War II. Uh, what was it again? I've already forgot my head. Okay. <laughs> Night Before Christmas. I'm sorry. Amazon by Mike Gordia or go to MikeGordia.com. All the links will be in the description of the podcast as well as in DV Radio chat right here on DVRadio.net. Thank you again, Mike. Bo, Google, Oink, thank you as always, and I will catch you guys next time around. All right. Later, brother. Later, bro. So that was Mike Gordia. He does have his book out again. World War II, Night Before Christmas. Go to Amazon, MikeBordia.com. One of the two. Check all his books out. Uh, like he said, he's got 13 books out, and he's working on some. Uh, he's taking a hiatus this month, and he'll be working on some uh, at the start of next year. Um, so what should we talk about for the next, oh, I don't know, 24 minutes? You want me to get started on the news? I saw, I saw that you did not put all my news links in there. Well, I didn't want to go back two months. <laughs> I, I, yelled at, I yelled at six. I'm like, where are the rest of my links? He goes, I don't know. I said, well, there's, he's like, this isn't all of them. I'm like, no, there's like three weeks worth of news I've got to cover. <laughs> you don't have to cover every single news. No, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm no, producer. But it be even number, damn it. Uh, 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 I'm producer. <laughs> number one, I'm producer. We're not doing that. We're not going down this road. Secondly, I believe that they've probably gotten enough of some of the bullshit out of the way. Thirdly, find the funniest shit that you can find in your news links, and that's what we'll talk about. That should cut it down to about oh. five. <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Well, this one is actually pretty funny. So, so they've there have been a lot of new like board games and stuff coming out as there are every year. Well, Monopoly took it one step further and made a Monopoly for millennials. They can go fuck Four. themselves. As soon as I saw that come up on the news, I was like, "Go fuck yourselves." <laughs> And it's not like buying property or anything. It's like exchanging shit. You don't even buy nothing. Like, it's not Monopoly. That's not Monopoly, okay? The reason it's called Monopoly is because one person owns every fucking thing. I think it's hilarious. So on the cover of the new edition, which has been sold out, by the way, people are all pissed off about this one, and it's sold out. Like, you can't buy it anymore. But on the cover of the new edition, Rich Uncle Penny Bags dons earphones, sunglasses, and a participation medal while taking a selfie. Below the game's tagline reads, forget real estate, you can't afford it anyway. <laughs> which I think is hilarious. <laughs> We needed that back in 2008 when Obama fucked up the real estate market. <laughs> Wait, did I just go there? Yes, I fucking did. So the, the game's description says money doesn't always buy a great time, but experiences, whether they're good or weird, last forever. It also says adults are... Oh, my ear. Time. Holy fucking shit. <laughs> game, please. Game pieces include a crying emoji and a hashtag. <laughs> oh, jeez, Meeker. Wow. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. <laughs> when I heard this, I'm like, I died laughing. I almost crashed my car because I, I was driving. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Google right now driving, laughing. Like, that's what's sad. I can see her actually doing that. Oh, driving God, and then so almost crashing. Um, and the creator, or one of the staff, 
um, said, we created Monopoly for Millennials to provide fans with a lighthearted game that allows Millennials to take a break from real life and laugh at the relatable experiences and labels that can sometimes be placed on them. Whether you are a lifestyle vlogger, emoji lover, or you make your side hustle selling vegan candles, Monopoly for, Mil- for Millennials is for you. <laughs> How can they how can you even play that how can they even play that game when they're in their safe closet and it's all dark in there? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But Bo is absolutely correct. You cannot buy anything. You earn experience points. So going to um going to a party earns you experience points and going you know, like different things earn you experience points. And the one with the most points at the end of the game wins. Yeah, because they have so much fucking life experience. (laughs) I swallowed a condom. Yay! Oh, man. It's so... I think it's hilarious. See, now I wonder if some fucking millennial was like, that's how you stop STDs and getting pregnant, as you swallowed a condom. (laughs) You know, it's funny. I, um... I was at Walmart, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was, yeah, Walmart. I was there, and I just happened to walk down the board, the like board game aisle, and you know they have like the card games and stuff too. Well, there's a fake news card game. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! So, so the Monopoly for Millennials made me think of, <laughs> made me think of that. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, I took a picture of it too. I was like, this is too crazy. Speak, speaking of card games, uh, Disgruntled Dex is going to be on with us next week to talk about their latest deck uh, of Disgruntled Dex. That's Dex, not Dix. Dex, Dex, D E C K, <laughs> Delta Echo Charlie Kilo. God. Oh, man. Um, but they'll be on next week, uh, hopefully, uh, unless they just got scared off by us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're probably like they're probably, that interview with Mike man holy fuck Bo can't talk dude like fuck that guy like he's not interviewing <laughs> me where did he go to journalism school at I didn't <laughs> <laughs> all natural baby all natural hey the um when was it two days yeah. ago I think oh. I was at Target. It's the same day, Bo. I asked if you had been to New Hampshire. <laughs> you told me that. Oh my God. <laughs> so, so I, I was all right. So I stopped at Target because I had to get a couple things, and then there was an end cap of like Christmas stuff, and they had like these cute little snow globes. So I picked one up, and it plays a Christmas song. And um, but further down on the end cap. And there were like little Santas and stuff, and one of them has um, a chalkboard, and so someone <laughs> wrote penis on the chalkboard. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I took a picture, and I'm like, Bo, when were you in New Hampshire? <laughs> <laughs> and um, then I- there's oh, so then I get home. And I go to show six, the snow globe. And I'm like, and it's so fucking cute. And I go to play the song. And he's like, no, no, no. (laughs) I'm like, what? He goes, no, no. It's too early for this. And I'm like, all fucking year, you're walking around saying Merry Christmas. And when it starts snowing, you're like, it's beginning to look a lot like. Christmas, but now we're less than a fucking month away, and it's too early. <laughs> it's like, huh. So, well, that's like when I went to the dentist. Um, I went to the dentist Wednesday. Yes, the BA finally approved them to remove all my teeth. Anyway, um, so I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we're sitting there in the waiting room, and I think they use a local station. But we're sitting there, and all that they played was fucking Christmas songs. And I'm like, it's not even December fucking 1st. I thought I could get through one more fucking week of no fucking music from Christmas until next week. And nope. 
couldn't fucking escape it. I was like, really? And man, my mom was just like, ah. Oh. And then we get back to the room where you know they actually do stuff, and there's nothing the entire time. And right before he walks in, a fucking Christmas song comes on. Like, what? What? Like. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> like, like, I, like, me and Mama were sitting there having fun, singing the songs and shit, and then all of a sudden, up comes a fucking Christmas song. I was like, well, that just ruined my fucking day. <laughs> but I did have. I, I agree. They they started way too early with Christmas. Um, well, it's like, well, no, 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 no. You guys think America is bad with fucking holidays? I just found out. That the UK is already selling Cadbury eggs. Cream eggs from Cadbury. Why, they're the best thing to come along since the Easter Bunny. And when he's gone, they're gone. Well, that's the UK. You don't I mean, understand. Why they have a dentist problem, you know? <laughs> God. Just you, don't, <laughs> you, you, you don't understand, Google. Cadbury <laughs> eggs, before Thanksgiving, they were before Thanksgiving they started selling them. Oh, man. Yeah. A- Easter oh. isn't until fucking, what, March, April of next year? So, yeah. what, a good four or five months? I'm like, really? And they say Americans are idiots? Are you fucking kidding me? Like, yeah, right? <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, oh. Well, you know. Like, oh. So, all right. So, um, th- there are a couple. There was one other game that I wanted to tell you guys about. Um, this is also like a, you know, like a millennial and younger type game, and it's the game of phones. Whoa, whoa! So it's, like, it's <laughs> the same as like apples to apples, where one person is a judge for each round, and but some of the cards are like find the weirdest things that come up when you Google image search yourself, and oh my most God. cracks wins the card and then there's um answer a question from the judge in emojis <laughs> and i'm like the this fuck? is so hard. video call anyone in your contacts first to connect wins i guarantee you that is like streaming ad wise on nickelodeon and shit right now oh. I guarantee you, you go over there and there's going to be a Barbie or some fucking girl doll commercial and then the next one is going to be the game of phones Ever wonder what it's like to sit with your friends and wonder what they're thinking about? Like, that's what it's probably fucking like. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, come on. Go to your photos, close your eyes, scroll, and pick one at random. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's going to go over real well if you've got your mom and dad sitting there and you just happen <laughs> to get your fucking titty shot and fucking, oh, <laughs> that was just some fun I was having one night by myself. Like, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what's going to happen. Some girl Play the first song that comes up on shuffle. I'm sorry, I have no music on my phone. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, can't play this game. Well, that that's like so. I love so the guy that's helping me get my room. I love him to death, and he he's through the BA, of course. But apparently, everybody assumes because we live in a technology fucking needy world that everybody has a printer and scanner nowadays. No. Especially one that don't fucking work. Like, <laughs> first off, eek cartridges cost five cents to make. They cost you forty-five to sixty bucks for an in-home com- fucking computer printer. I'm not gonna fucking go out and buy that shit every time I fucking need it. You can go suck a dick. Secondly, I've used that scanner maybe once in its entire fucking existence, and it doesn't work anymore. It worked one time. What the fu- and it doesn't work anymore. So, what the fuck do you want me to do? Like, I'm not going to Staples or Ups or anything like that and fucking buying the shit for five cents a piece. Like, I don't get it. Like, <laughs> it's like when I was in school, everybody assumed we had computers. And I was like, yeah, I didn't have a computer until I graduated from basic. And I bought that with my own money. So, like... <laughs> Uh, like we would have computer work and they would want you to research shit and use the internet and i'm like uh the only internet access i have to is here at the school well you're just gonna have to come in before and after school and do it won't you and i'm like um sure 
So I would have to literally go in before school and after school and do my fucking research for all this shit. And I finally got a Walmart $600 desktop computer. And then I think it took us a good six months to finally get internet. And like, we've really not had internet in this house that long, maybe 12 years, 10 or 12 years. So (laughs) (laughs) like, I don't even have, there's only one person in my household that has a smartphone. Guess who it is? My young brother. Like, (laughs) <laughs> everybody else has a flip phone we all have almost the exact same flip phone like, I'm a fucking dinosaur apparently like we're all dinosaurs in this house so, like, <laughs> we don't give a fuck about technology like yeah it makes our we, you could consider us Mennonites half the time I'm not even joking like <laughs> if you guys don't well, know what a Mennonite is it's an Amish person that uses technology to an extent that's what I'm referring to. <laughs> well, for, for all you uh, non-technology people, if you have an iPhone, you can download the fake news app and you can play the fake news card game on the app. Oh, my God. <laughs> or you could just watch CNN. <laughs> <laughs> wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. I'll back that up a little bit in the podcast and post-production. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> That's too funny. I'm sorry. I had to. I didn't mean to throw you off. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, you know, you'll just have to take out the dead air. <laughs> um. Um. Oh, you know what else you can access? The Donald Daters dating app. The the what? <laughs> Donald Daters. So, so like this <laughs> data porn star site, or what are we talking about? <laughs> no, it's a dating app for Trump supporters. Oh my so, god! So the creator, the creator of this app, um, realized that she was being ostracized as soon as it became apparent that she was a Republican and supported Trump. And then, you know, she was on like dating websites and, um, and so no one was, was asking her out for dates, dates anymore. So she was like, well, fuck it. I'm just going to make my own. Um, and so she made a dating app called Donald daters and it's strictly for Trump supporters and people that are using it, um, the, it, it's been, it's been very positive because they're meeting people with the same views and all that fun stuff. So. Wow. So yes. Debo, you should have let me do all of the news. No. <laughs> no. Well, this was one of the news stories. I will kick you out if you do all of your news stories. <laughs> like I will legitimately kick you out of this. I will I will end the show myself. Like <laughs> but he, but he, but he, that's all folks. We out gone. <laughs> right? Alright, I'll give you one more crazy one before and then after the break I'll do the the craziest the top like three or four from this week's news. Um, this is from, and I was very embarrassed when I heard this story because it's from the Netherlands. And as some of you may know, that is where I was born. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> you probably heard this, but a 69 year old ma- man asks to be declared 49, claiming age is as fluid as gender. Oh my god. And Bo and Bo, this is this happened right after you had the surgery and like the week after when we were gonna go on the air and I asked you if you could maybe pull a clip. <laughs> um <laughs> you were like, I I can't even have my computer on my lap. So I'm like, <laughs> Alright, no problem. <laughs> so so he said, um <laughs> he said we can make our own decisions if we want to change our name or if we want to change our gender so I want to change my age my feeling about my body and about my mind is that I'm about 40 or 45 hey Being Google Google really yeah. quick if you'll send me that link I'll try to route 
I'll, I'll try to play it here on air really quick. Send me that link. Well, it's, but I didn't want the whole thingy. Just so tell me where to it. start the video out. Okay. I don't remember. I oh would my have God. To the... See, this, this, this is the problems we have at TV Ray. Right. Okay, you people. Here, here, I'll put, I'll drop it. I'll send you the link. <laughs> It's only it's it's only like forty nine seconds the whole thing. Okay, so. so we'll we'll just play the whole thing. Fuck it, it'll be all right. So I've got to figure out my settings really quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I got to bring up Spotify because that's the only one that <laughs> that actually shows on my fucking Microsoft settings cuz Microsoft sucks ass. Thank you Microsoft for updating my 2.0 USB drive to fucking 3.0. You fucking dicks. <laughs> fucking <laughs> retarded your, motherfuckers. In your 2-inch window, you're looking at your 17-inch screen with all the other pop-up <laughs> things you got going on. <laughs> right? Yeah, right? Like you I don't uh, think they understand what my fucking window looks like half the time. Okay, I'm going to try to play I this. I didn't either until you <laughs> screenshotted it and sent it to me, and I'm like, how in the hell <laughs> is he doing <laughs> Right? Okay, really quick, let me know if you can hear this. And I, I feel... I so Can you hear that? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to start it over, and we're going to listen to the 49-second clip of this man wanting to be 49. For under my age. Because I'm much more younger than my 68. So when I ask for a mortgage, for example, they say, it's impossible. If I go on Tinder, you know, then I get women from, from 68, uh, 69, uh, when the women are there. And when I'm on Tinder, you know, the, uh, then they say, okay, then you can lie for your age. You say you're 49. I don't want to lie. I want to be myself. So don't force me to lie. But when I'm really 49 again, I will have a baby again. I will buy a new car again. I will paint my house again. I go outside and I invest my money again. Because now I'm old man. You know, I have to save my money to give to my kids so they can live. But if I have that age again, I have hope again. I'm new again. And there, the whole future is there for me again. I got to give the dude, I got to give the dude credit. Uh, to be 69, he doesn't look fucking 69 at all. Like, no, I agree. But, 49 is stretching it a bit much. He looks like he's, <laughs> he looks like he's mid fifties. Um, 60, 69, not a chance, but 49, there's no fucking way in hell anybody's going to fall for that unless he tells them that he's used makeup and done drugs his entire life. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, got, it's crazy. I'm like, are you fucking serious? Like, you can't just change your age. No, that's not how this shit works. <laughs> That's not how this works. <laughs> we thought about that about sex, too, but apparently, you know. <laughs> well, Unless you had surgery, I mean, but. <laughs> oh, man. Identify as a tree. Well, you know what I identify as? <laughs> That's right. I identify as a baby shark. <laughs> Not out loud. <laughs> I, I bet. I bet you sit there and you shake your head to the side and you mouth the I words. Do. <laughs> Psychology one hundred and one. <laughs> oh my god! My wife hate me about three weeks ago because I play that version and then the next version and then the <laughs> next version. <laughs> you guys have got to go see Baby Cars on YouTube. Just look up Baby I Cars. <laughs> Monster truck, 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 truck. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, we need to go to break. I've got a six minute fucking long song, but it's really fucking good. Don't ask me how I fucking put that in the list. But anyway, you're listening to Barrett's talk on the other side. We're going to have the rest of Google's junkets in the news. And if she decides to try and do the last two months, I'm going to fucking cut this show short. But anyway, we'll be back right after this on WTBRDVRadio.net. The holiday season isn't always about physical gifts. Sometimes it is more than that. So during this holiday season, give to dvfarm.org. The DV Farm in Gilsom, New Hampshire is dedicated to helping addicted and homeless veterans get their lives back on track. Help them and let them know that they have a purpose and they are not alone. They watched your six when they volunteered. Now you can watch their six. Give to dvfarm.org today. Let's get. 
get it on. We've got some fresh beef for you. The music. Let's go. You're listening to WTVR on DVRadio.net. By veterans for veterans. Simply made for you. You big dummy. <laughs> And now, it's time to find out what stupid junk is in the news. Yay, we're back. Woo! I had to look at the screen to make sure I was unmuted. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was about, I was actually ready to say, you got to unmute Google. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so it's funny because when I was going through some of the news stories the other, last night, or six, he said that he had to stay awake for a particular one. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, what, that's what he told me. He was like, I'm going to stay up because Google's nerds are so fucking blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I know, right? And, and here he went to sleep before the show even started. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old man. All right, well, this, this is apparently a big big story and it's becoming quite an issue uh starbucks says it will ban pornography on its in-store wi-fi networks sorry (laughs) folks you no longer go to starbucks to view your pornography you Um, mean to tell me i can't have my morning coffee and jerk off at the same time (laughs) in starbucks what the fuck (laughs) <laughs> Starbucks po- policy change comes after a petition issued by an internet safety group, Enough is Enough, garnered 26,000 signatures. Um, the group CEO, Donna Rice Hughes, claims that by allowing unfiltered Wi-Fi, Starbucks was keeping the doors wide open for convicted sex offenders and <laughs> others to fly under the radar from law enforcement and use free public Wi-Fi services to access illegal child porn and hardcore pornography. That's bullshit. They just wanted to have an excuse to ban porn. Yep. Starbucks said in a statement that while it rarely occurs, the use of Starbucks public Wi-Fi to view illegal or egregious content is not, nor has it ever been, permitted. We have identified a solution to prevent this content from being viewed within our stores, and we will begin introducing it to our U.S. locations in 2019. I guarantee you. I was um, just going to say, sorry. I was just... (laughs) Both bands porn. <laughs> I was just going to say, I guarantee you, they're going to use the same coding that the school systems use. And I can tell you right now that those firewalls are penetrable. No pun intended. Like, you can get through those so fucking quick and easy. Like, it's not even funny. We used to do it all the time, and it's still true today. Conspiracy well, theories uh, have it as uh, a rise in, you know, local library memberships. So that's what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, back in, like I said, back in 2016, McDonald's and Subway both banned pornography on their Wi-Fi networks. So I mean, Starbucks was behind the curve on that. Seriously, who the fuck is going into a restaurant looking up porn while they eat? That's what I was wondering. I want that extra sauce. Well, <laughs> in in response to Starbucks banning porn, the site YouPorn bans Starbucks. Yes. That means <laughs> no Starbucks. more Starbucks ads on YouPorn. <laughs> Adult website YouPorn has responded to Starbucks' decision to ban pornography from its free Wi-Fi by forbidding its employees from using the brand's product. The coffee behemoth plans to block porno co- content from its free Wi-Fi from 2019. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> um, a statement went out around YouPorn offices, and it says, in light of the news that Starbucks has blocked customers from searching and viewing adult content within their establishments, 
Starbucks products will officially be banned from the U-Porn offices effective January 1st, 2019. So if you work at U-Porn, you better get all them Starbucks coffees in now because you will not be allowed to bring it inside. Right? <laughs> oh, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> It is it is unclear how employees who break the rule will be dealt with. <laughs> it's, like, it's it's just crazy. I don't know it's what to madness. say to that. It's madness. It's madness. Now, staying on this topic, this is the story that Six needed to stay awake for. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> obviously, that didn't happen. <laughs> 58 Iowa inmates sue state after pornography is banned in prison. Yeah, that six told me about this, and I was like, what fucking prison is this? I want to go. Um, like the, the, inmates, the inmates claim they are being denied a constitutional right to <laughs> pornography and are seeking $25,000 each. In damages. Now, this same exact prison, hold on, they used to have what is called a private reading room. And basically, it was like a little porn room. So they would, they <laughs> had, tank, like, that's porn, what it was. <laughs> oh, they had, no, like they had porn magazines that an inmate could check out the magazine and be escorted to this private reading room. And when he was finished, um, however long, he felt like taking when he was finished then the, the guard would have to go through the magazine to make sure that no photos were taken out and nothing was left in the magazine i'm like are you fucking kidding me I'm like, I, it's like i told six can you imagine if we had a dedicated room in the service for that it, it's ridiculous it's like ridiculous. <laughs> what 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 pisses me off about inmates, prisoners of any kind, jail, prison, whatever, they talk about their constitutional rights because they broke the law. They're they're so distraught right. that they have no constitutional rights. Okay. Well, volunteer for any military service and I guarantee you ninety nine percent of what you get in prison, you're not gonna have in the service. Guarantee fucking see it. I yep. guarantee fucking see it. Now, that's not to say, you know, yep. driving and stuff like that. We're taking that off the table, obviously. We're talking about when you're in the barracks or in y- y- your unit, whatever, on duty, you're going to have 99% of your rights taken away. I don't remember any time that we were treated any better than an inmate. I mean, as far as, you know, our rights. What makes them any better than you or me or anyone that has served in the service? Well, you know. And I'm I'm not trying to make this, you know, about military getting rights. Obviously, I'm not because that's there's a reason for it. It it makes you appreciate what you've got for one. And two, it makes you fucking work as a goddamn team and help your battle buddy. But my point is we've gotten to a point in society that we will crumble under these smallest things and give, 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 and we're actually taken away from other people. And you want to talk about fairness, look at the fucking laws that's come up in the last year and a half. (laughs) Well, these these 58 inmates filed a lawsuit in U.S. District Court in Des Moines. Whatever. (laughs) Yeah, that place. Des Moines, (laughs) Iowa. Des Des Moines. In an effort to overturn, um, to overturn that closed down designated porn reading rooms in Iowa prisons. That's what, that's really what, what happened. And, um, I was going to say it was Cook County there in fucking Chicago, (laughs) Illinois, but you know, you know what, you know what? (laughs) The ban also prohibits inmates from having nude photos in their cells and the Playboy magazine. And part of the suit says the, um, the, suit, the lawsuit argued that female correctional officers employed at men's prisons should find employment elsewhere if they cannot handle a work envir- environment that includes pornography. Well, my it's thought process on that is you dick sucks need to fucking learn a little fucking respect and humility. 
Yeah. It's a 26 page suit. And the place oh my the God. They, they stand soundly in their cause and plan to stop the tyranny that was the ban against born and new published material at the prison. Tyranny. Jesus Christ. What, what is going on over there in Snafu's you know, neck of the woods? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> he needs to get his shit together over there. I tell so, you they, so taking away <laughs> porn and masturbation in a prison is now tyranny. Got it. Right, oh, right. And, no. and it violates their constitutional rights. All right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Isn't it great? Jesus Christ. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, all right, college campuses. This is kind of crazy, too. So remember when all the school shootings were happening and in Pennsylvania um, there were the high schools that were issuing rocks, putting buckets of rocks in oh, yeah, their school's and, class? And, but, then, and then there were... Were they the all the Amish schools or was it just... It was rocks and baseball oh, bats. Then, oh. <laughs> the, then, then there were the schools with like the mini baseball bats. Yeah. Well, Oakland University arms faculty with hockey pucks to protect against active shooters. Gee. You ever got hit with a hockey puck, though? Those motherfuckers ain't no joke. <laughs> it's an unconventional approach to fighting back against a mass shooter, but it's something Oakland University is willing to try. Faculty at school will soon be armed with hockey pucks. The first thing that came to my mind was a hockey puck. I was a hockey coach for my kids growing up. I remember getting hit in the head with a hockey puck once, and it hurt, said Oakland <clears throat> University Police Chief Mark Gordon. And I'm like... Who the fuck is going to jump out in front of an active shooter to throw a hockey puck? <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. I, I know what's going to go through that dude's mind. Who the fuck threw that? I'm spraying everybody. <laughs> That's exactly what's going to happen. Just give, him the, just give him a rubber band and the cigarette butts and just do like we used to do at home and have the little oh. wars, you know? <laughs> Damn. Especially when you roll it up as tight as you can and you let that Hell bitch go. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Shoot them eyes out, boys. Aim for the eyes. <laughs> They're smoking anyway. Hell, just give them the rubber band. I mean, right? <laughs> unlimited ammo. It, it's crazy. It's crazy. Professor, uh, the communications professor said, a student walked into my classroom and for the first time in 20 years asked me to lock the door because she didn't feel safe. And then he continued to say, the hockey puck fits really well into your briefcase or backpack. It doesn't roll around. Yeah, I'm going to take the time to go in my briefcase or backpack (laughs) and get out a fucking hockey puck while I'm being shot at by some fucking idiot. Yeah, it's crazy. 800 of them have been distributed to our faculty, said this professor. Um, and there's an additional 1,700 that I'm working with Student Congress to distribute to our students. My question is, they only get one per. So what happens when you've thrown it and you miss? <laughs> well, then oh, you no. have to look at the student next to you and hope <laughs> that maybe they have one. <laughs> and that they have a fucking better arm than you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can see it now, man. But, Ch- but children- why do they want to? Why do they want to arm all the students with a ho- with a hockey puck? But can't you see it now? Like I don't make light of school shootings or anything, but I can see the news headline now: school attendees and faculty and staff murdered due to hockey pucks missing active shooter. Like I can see it right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, can you not see the fucking headlines that's going to come from that? That shit is going to fucking happen now. It's just like the little fucking eight, nine inch fucking baseball bat sluggers from Louisville. Like, you mean to tell me you're going to take your little eight inch fucking stick and go beat that motherfucker that's got a goddamn bullet aimed at your head? Really? Yeah, okay. Or, I'm going to throw a rock because that's what they did back in Roman days. Motherfucker, this ain't Russia. You bitches are fucking little girls. Like, seriously, you whine at a fucking... Your smartphone doesn't work, and you cry for days. Like, you expect me to believe that you're going to take on an active shooter with a rock, a baseball bat, and a fucking hockey puck? No. Next, like, come the fuck on. That's 
exactly what they're saying. I mean, come on, stop putting those the signs that say "gun free school zone." <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, I'm a, right we're there. armed with hockey pucks. Damn it! Don't you come here. <laughs> like the, these motherfuckers think they can put M- MacGyver out of shit. These kids didn't have to grow up without anything. Obviously, like oh, man. you can crazy. tell. Holy shit. The, you can tell the schools that have it made and never had to worry about anything because they come up with stupid shit like this. Yep. Conspiracy theories say that they're looking for new quarterbacks for their high school team or college team. So they're just, you know, <laughs> man about hockey fucks instead. <laughs> like, oh, like, I know. I, 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 don't, fuck, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm so fucking. <laughs> my mind is blown. At, I don't get it. Like. Fuck. Saying saying with the college theme, um, this is this story is actually quite disturbing and sad, Um, and it really goes to show why some of us call certain individuals in the on the left side of the aisle snowflakes. Um, Legal, legal gun owning Harvard grad evicted over legally owned guns. So I had to. I'm sorry. This, this, this Harvard grad student, um, she, she lives in Mass right now, Massachusetts. Um, she had gone away for the weekend. All right. And while she was gone, her roommates decided to break into her room and saw a Make America Great Again hat, which caused them to panic. And they went searching all over her room, trying to find a gun. So when she got back, they confronted her. And she was like, well, yeah, I've got a, I've got a gun. Like, what's your point? Like, I was in an abusive relationship. I have a gun so I can protect it. I can protect myself. They had a conniption and they emailed their landlord and said, and basically said that I'm afraid for my life because she has a gun and that gun might suddenly fire a bullet at me and kill me or someone can break into my house. And, you know, um, it, I mean, it's, it's fucking crazy it's crazy so now the t- the landlord is trying to kick her out kick and th- she's a legal gun owner he's trying to kick her out saying you know like saying we know she's following all the laws she's doing what she's supposed to be, <laughs> to be none of you heard that did you I heard something. I couldn't make it out, but I heard something. So I'm <laughs> sorry, but I got to tell you guys, I'm sitting here talking to my mom, and she's getting stuff ready because she's going to go lay down, and I can't get up, obviously, to get anything at night if I can't sleep. So we're sitting here, and I asked her if she could get me something to snack on tonight if I get hungry. And do you all know what a fudge round is? Yeah. Okay. They're little Debbie snacks. So she's got one sitting there, and it's turned upside down, and I'm like, what is that? And she's like, it's a fudge round. I was like, oh, it looked like a hockey puck. Speaking of hockey pucks. And she goes, now why in the hell would I lay a damn hockey puck there? And I'm like, and I'm trying not to laugh because I just unmuted right before she said that. And her face, she was like, I'm so sorry. (laughs) I'm sorry. That was just too fucking hilarious. Like Mom, at the top of her only lungs. knew the conversations we were having right now. <laughs> right? <laughs> She's over here mocking me now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. God bless your mom, Bo. I <laughs> love her to death. Oh, God. Oh, what a woman. Sorry. I'm Google, sorry. Go ahead. Back to the liberals that are taking away the right to own guns on college campuses no. or whatever. Well, no, she doesn't live on, ca- on campus. Oh, She's it's not friends- on campus. She's renting with four other people, and so she, when the roommates emailed the landlord or responded to the landlord, they were like, you know, we we have nothing against people owning guns, and the, you know, we support well, the Second Amendment. 
happened. And and if she's going to keep her gun here, then we just want her to make sure that it's kept under lock and key in in a gun safe, which it already is, by the way, um, with mm-hmm. with a trigger lock so it can't <laughs> just fire on its own. But we would feel even even more safe if she could just take the firing pin out of her gun. You know what? I, I, you know, I, I got a feel for them. I've, I've had, I've had my, my 12 gauge go off before and nobody was around it and it just, it got a mind of its own one day and it was like, you know what? Fuck this shit. And it started firing off rounds. What was that? So it, it happens all the time apparently. So the <laughs> landlord, he contacted the chief of police mm-hmm. and who went, who, who the girl was like, sure, come on in, like, make sure that, you know, I'm following all the laws and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and then the landlord responded to including, her, including the girl and, and said, you know, like, she's following all the, all the laws. She's, her gun is safe. But, be, but despite all of that, because you guys feel unsafe, we're, I'm going to tell her that she has to leave. And if, and then he told the girl, if you move out, okay, this is this is another key part in this because it's absolutely insane. He said, if you move out, then I will not charge you the change of tenant fee that he normally does. But if you stay and one of your roommates moves out, then I am holding you responsible for all of their rent up to $6,000. See, I'm pretty sure there's a law against that because, A, you're discriminating sure against – Yeah, that's what I thought because, one, it's discrimination. Two, you're discriminating against someone's rights. And three, it's not in their contract, obviously, that she cannot own a gun. Yep. Well, and this is in Massachusetts. Massachusetts is one, is one, it's, I mean, it's a libtard state. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's a very left leaning state. Well, not um, only that, I've heard some weird shit about that. Ma- they have very strict laws for landlords, like what they can and cannot do. So, I mean, she's easily got a court case here anyway. Well, not only that, I've heard some weird shit about Massachusetts and laws. Like, one day, they'll be all for the law. Yeah, let's push that law. And the next day, it's like, right. no, that law doesn't matter. We, You don't understand it. Uh, it's verbiage. And I'm like, okay, what the fuck does it mean then if we don't understand it's fucking verbiage? Like, you can't get any more redundant than that. Oh, I know. Well, meanwhile, there's a, a town in... Washington State, uh, fuck, what's the name of the place now? Oh, Spokane. I can't think of it right now. But there, Washington State has passed some crazy gun, lo- crazy new gun laws, and the chief of police in this one town is like, I, I want to become a sanctuary city again for gun laws. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna follow these laws. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna <laughs> arrest anybody for breaking them. <laughs> Yeah, it's like the the bump and, stock thing and, that they just passed. It's like, you know what? It's funny that you are going to do that because, number one, even professional shooters can't fucking use the thing right. They have, on, on, like, on record stating those things are a fucking bitch to fucking get used to. Like, it takes years to get used to them. Well, it's crazy. One of the, I think it's like someone in Washington State's government or whatever, but she went out and was like, you can't just pick and choose which laws you want to follow. <laughs> I'm like, tell that to the other <laughs> sanctuary cities. Right? Tell that to California. Right, right. Tell that to uh, uh, t- tell that to all, right. all these tell that to all these sure. religious folks who one day say that you can't do one thing and then they're like oh but the bible that that's you are interpreting it wrong that no 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 oh man so so this this is your feel good story of the evening Whoa. um and knickers <laughs> is his name the freakishly huge cow that is too big to be slaughtered his name is Nickers. He is in Australia. He stands six feet four inches tall um, and weighing an un- ungodly 220 stone. That's the same as a Toyota Helix. They really aren't kidding. <laughs> it's like he weighs like 6,000 pounds. He weighs so much. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so... Like if you see the photo of this this ginormous cow <laughs> it's so funny okay like... so putting this in perspective you said he's what 
twenty two hundred and twenty stone. Stones. It's like three thousand yeah. eighty. Okay, pounds, almost thirty one hundred pounds. Yeah, because one stone is uh, roughly fourteen pounds. That motherfucker is a ton and a half. Oh yeah. <laughs> and if so, you look at the pictures that they showed on the internet, he is just out. I mean, just towering he, over the other cattle. This son Granted, of a bitch. They take the other cattle that are there are a little this, this, smaller. But this holy fucking shit. This son of a bitch is the Hulk of fucking cows, let me tell you. <laughs> like, it looks like that motherfucker walked up to the fucking farm one day and was like, what's up? I want some of that radioactive shit. You got any? And, and, and the farmer was like, yeah, man, here it is. And he's like, here's a dose. He's like, nah, bitch, give me all of it. And he fucking swallowed it. And what? that's what became of it. Well, this is a message to all of to all of the cows out there, if you don't want to go to slaughter, make yourself too big to go. Well, fuck, I'm in there. Yes! <laughs> like, he, can't, he can't go. He's too big. People are people are probably asking why he can't go to slaughter. The reason being is the slaughter the slaughterhouses are actually made for your average size cow. And they literally walk them into a stall and... And they kill them and they slaughter them and stuff. He cannot fit into this fucking booth where they slaughter them. It's in fucking possible. So you can't do it in the field because it's non-sterile. And you have to follow bylaws in order to kill, slaughter, and uh, uh, distribute the meat. So in order for them to do that, they would have to literally build something that could fucking hold this bastard inside the slaughterhouse and that's going to cost more than it would for them to just fucking feed the bitch until he dies like that's why they can't fucking do anything their hands are literally tied unless some fucking bush man comes out and like hey man I, I i i need that fucking cow yes and he fucking kills him i don't know why i sounded like an englishman right there because i can do an aussie accent like no fucking tomorrow but you guys get the fucking idea well well, Nickers is close, but he is not quite the tallest cow um, in the world. <laughs> There's a cow um, that was measured in 2010 in Rome that was six feet five inches. His name was Bellino, and what he the currently fuck? holds the world record for being the tallest cow in the world. What the so fuck? Nickers Did close. he just needs to get another 1.1 inches taller? <laughs> Did they, like, fucking cross-breed these motherfuckers with Clydesdales or something? Like, son of a bitch! I've never heard of a cow getting that fucking tall at most four and a half, five fucking feet, six feet and five inches, though? Like, what the fuck are they feeding these motherfuckers? Like, this brings a whole new fucking meaning to steroidic cows. Like, holy shit fuck. Who I was... even thought to look up in the Guinness Book of World Records if there was a cow that was bigger than bigger? <laughs> Obviously, the motherfucker that owns that one. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, I wonder what the biggest cow is. <laughs> oh, man. It's crazy. It's Alien crazy. cattle, as Tree says. <laughs> <laughs> Alien fucking cattle. <laughs> that That's... That's what happens when you get probed. You get blown up. Anyway, um, yeah, that wasn't That's as funny it. as it was in my head. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> but Six... That was your feel good story of the <laughs> of the month. <laughs> I don't know about feel good. That was more like weird the fuck out moment. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but it kind of makes you feel good that this giant cow can't go to the slaughterhouse. <laughs> Hell no! I bet that bitch is lean as fuck. I want some of that goddamn beef. <laughs> Imagine the fucking beef all that son of a bitch. <laughs> Think of that fucking shoulder you're going to get off that bastard. Holy hell. Fucking ground oh, beef for days. Hello can feed every homeless person in Boston. <laughs> it was like, times over. <laughs> I, oh I know how we're feeding the homeless this year. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you guys ready to go to Australia? <laughs> Oh, man. Motherfucker. It's crazy. It's crazy. I tell you, it's crazy. 3,080 pounds. Two and a half fucking tons. Holy shit. Or one and a half fucking tons. Oh, my God. Well, either way, he weighs a lot. (laughs) One and a half. 
that that's bigger than your average fucking car. Can you imagine having a cow heavier than your fucking car? Like it's also a little taller than your average car. Just I know. <laughs> Holy shit. Imagine that son of a bitch sneezing on your ass. Oh fuck. Man, he's fucking six four. I'm only five seven. He could squish me. <laughs> right? That's bigger than your average fucking moose up here in Alaska. Holy uh, shit. Imagine him. <laughs> Imagine hitting that bastard in your little Prius. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, no, 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 no. You guys want to imagine something? That cow is 3,080 pounds. Imagine his cow patties. <laughs> wow. You guys want to imagine something? Yeah, you thought you stepped in cow shit. That motherfucker will make you step in a goddamn cow fucking dumpster. <laughs> Or sewer, excuse me. I don't know why I said dumpster. It's alright, it's alright. <laughs> it's a trashy night. <laughs> oh, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, alright, well, if that's all of the news you've got, I think we might want to... Alright, well, we'll end the show here. Um, all of you guys that are wondering where the roundtable discussions is, I'm on. Uh, I'm working on it. I have to do the audio, then I have to do the video so I can sync everything up, and then we come out with the podcast, then we come out with the uh, the uh, YouTube version later on. Um, secondly, I am trying to catch up on podcasts. I can't remember if I've caught up on them or not. I don't think all of them's up yet. Uh, we're going to get all the contraband episodes out before the new season starts. Uh, David's actually in California. If you haven't seen working with uh, Jeff Vicente on the new Sosa album, as well as recording contraband episodes right now as we speak. Uh, don't forget, grab your copy of World War II Night Before Christmas by Mike Guardia, either at Amazon, and you can use smile.amazon.com and make DV Farm your charity of choice. And a portion of that will go directly to the DV Farm. And you can also get his book, or you can go to mikeguardia.com. All the, all the links will be in the description of the podcast. Um, don't forget, enter for your chance to win two free bags of DB Radio's coffee, and it could be named by you. Just go to DB Radio's Facebook page, go to the pinned post that has the big bag of coffee on it. You have to have your entries in no later than December 4th, 12 midnight Pacific time. That's California time. That's West Coast time. Anything after 12 midnight Pacific time, that's 3 o'clock Eastern time. So I know when you motherfuckers are... I, I can read, I right? If it's after that, it will not count. Um, on December 5th, we'll have a poll-up of the top three. Not top 10, not top 20, top three. Then we'll let you guys vote. Uh, we'll give that about a week on December 11th. And then December 15th, we'll announce the winner. And uh, you will get your two free bags of coffee as soon as it's ready, and you'll get it before everybody else. And thank you to Eubora Coffee Roastery. Please go over to EuboraCoffee.com. Check them out. They're based out of uh, Georgia, down where my key is, even though he's stuck on the other side of the border. But uh, <laughs> um, thank you, Mike, for coming on. Thank you, uh, everybody who listened tonight. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the show. Sorry that it took so long for me to come back. Uh, we'll try to pick things up as much as possible. Uh, go to Twitter at DV underscore DV Radio. Uh, follow us. I try to tweet you guys as much as possible and try to interact with you as well as the YouTube channels, DB Radio and Dysfunctional Veterans. Uh, MyDBStore.com. Get your stockings for uh, Christmas. Um, DBFarm.org. Uh, anything I'm forgetting. Anybody. Uh, barracks. Uh, DBBarracks.com. Go sign up. Recoil's not here. I got to get him to record it so I can just play it because I can't do it as good as sound. But please go sign up for it and do it. Um... I think that's all. Uh, Google, do you have anything? Be safe, and we'll see you next week, as long as Bo doesn't try to die again. That's right. Uh, Boink, yourself? Hey, just for those that uh, get to know your area, uh, with, with Alaska, with the earthquake we just had up here, uh, get to know your areas, the California wildfires, you name it. Uh, have a bug out kit ready. Uh, be prepared for natural disasters, because they can strike anywhere, anytime. Um, and once that happens, again, reach out to those that need help, uh, especially our, our, our fellow veteran community. There's there's a ton of them up here in Alaska. Luckily, we had no fatalities with this uh, that I've heard or we've seen reported. So, you know, that's that's a plus. Uh, a lot of it's just infrastructure with the roadways. So 
Um, again, get to know your areas, have a bug out bag, be prepared, and uh, stay safe, everyone. Yes, please, guys, take care of yourself. Look out for one, one another. I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Until next week, fuck sickles. Bye bye. Good night, everybody. Hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. And we are clear for the night. Woohoo! So I, I went to I went to speedtest.net to uh, see what my uh, internet speed is during the show. Uh, the ping is 35, which is fucking horrible. Download speed is 8.44, but the upload speed is 0.37. How the fuck we do a show every fucking Saturday? I have no fucking clue. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's great. So if you don't understand what 0.37 is, uh, go back to dial-up fucking error. <laughs> I love it. Oh shit! You said you were in the boondocks, but god damn, <laughs> dude, I don't understand how they fucking hear the show. I really don't. After seeing that, 